The following program, Know the Cause, is paid for by Mediatrician Incorporated. Mycobacterium. Myco means fungus. Bacterium means bacteria. What then is a mycobacterium? Well, I had jungle rot, that's a, in Vietnam, that's a mycobacterium. Tuberculosis, a mycobacterium. And now leprosy, they're saying in Florida, they're seeing cases of leprosy just, you know, really uh, reaching high numbers. Uh, folks, I wanna teach you a little bit about that. Leprosy became Hansen's disease. Who's this guy, Hansen? Fascinating segment. Chris and Lisa are here today to talk about the pioneer and the smart point. Remember, smart point. And then finally, toward the end of the show, depression and lots and lots and lots of drugs. Watch. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Pioneer, better air for your home. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. You know, I have a lot of medical books, and I find myself on the internet going to things I love. My wife and I like buying an old rehab house and fixing it up. I love old cars, old motorcycles, have a little collection. Um, and I love mycology, fungus, and so forth. It's sad that I don't pick this book up more than I do, but when I do and I read through it, Leviticus 14, 33, 34, the Lord tells Moses and Aaron, when you enter the land of Canaan that I'm giving you as your possession, if I put a spreading, this Bible says mildew in a house in that land. Another Bible I have at home says, if I put a spreading, this is unbelievable, leprosy. In a, so leprosy and mildew, one and the same. Then long comes a doctor in the 19th century and says, I know what causes this before he know what caused it, God knows what caused it. Let's talk about leprosy and fungus. The term leprosy, including leper, lepers, leprosy, leprous, occurs 68 times in the Bible, 58, five times in the Old Testament. Okay, 13 times in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the instances of leprosy most likely meant a variety of infectious skin diseases, even mold and mildew on clothing and walls. Isn't that fascinating? To me, the more I study this, the more I get why the Lord has allowed this show to continue on television for 24 consecutive years. Um, he uses wretches like me to get his work done. Leprosy became Hansen's disease. You see, God didn't get it right, Hansen did. A Norwegian physician, Gerhard Hansen, discovers the purported cause of leprosy, a mycobacterium leper. All right, like tuberculosis, leprosy was found to be caused by mycobacterium. In 1931, leprosy changed its name to mitigate the stigma of leprosy. It's now called Hansen's disease. 2017, for a long time, Hansen's disease was thought to be a hereditary, a curse, or a punishment from God. Kind of interesting. Mildew, mold, mycotoxins, leprosy they would touch the hand of the Lord and be healed, okay? That's pretty great, but today antibiotics are used. Uh, mycobacterium, okay, I believe that myco, meaning fungus, and the word mycobacterium says it all. Biblically speaking, I believe the words mildew and leprosy were synonyms, but not everyone agrees with me. The name mycobacterium, which means fungus bacterium, was introduced in 1896. The name does not imply that mycobacterium are fungi. Rather, it describes the way in the tubercles uh, bacilli grow in the surface of liquid media as a mold-like uh, pellicle. What's a pellicle? It's a thin uh, skin or film. Could it be a biofilm that grows under the bacteria or the fungus? Looks like mold, but it's really bacteria? I don't know. Let's study this a little more. On one side of the story, you have our Center for Disease Control saying, with early diagnosis and treatment, the disease can be cured, leprosy they're talking about. Antibiotics used during the treatment will kill the bacteria that cause leprosy. Hmm. But while the treatment can cure the disease and prevent it from getting worse, it does not reverse nerve damage or physical disfigurement that comes before the diagnosis. 
So it cures it, but it can't go back and fix the disfigurement. Here's the other side of the story. This uh, is in a medical journal. By 2000, the World Health Organization declared leprosy, known as Hansen's disease, eliminated as a public health threat. Despite this declaration, and to this day, leprosy remains a significant cause of neurologic dysfunction. Wait a minute, antibiotics are neurotoxic and disability. With more than four million new cases identified in 2020 to, I'm sorry, 2000 to 2022. In 2021, the World Health Organization reports about 130,000 new cases globally, the lowest ever reported in new cases. But this decrease obeys the underreported and underperformance of national leprosy programs imposed by the, of course, COVID-19. Can't give you an accurate number because COVID-19 is such a big problem. What does this tell you? Their antibiotics haven't been able to fix it. 130,000 new cases? and our antibiotics work to cure it? Must be something other than bacteria. I used to have jungle rot, and that's a mycobacterium in Vietnam, I had it. It responded well to many, many years of antifungal treatments, not antibiotics. The most notable mycobacterium disease is tuberculosis. It too is treated with antibiotics, yet for decades, it's killed as many people as COVID killed during the pandemic, a million and a half to two million. If antibiotics used to treat Hansen's disease or leprosy, jungle rot, and tuberculosis are really curing these diseases, why are so many people dying of it? What might work better? And then logic came across my computer screen. Antifungal drug called amphotericin B, this is probably a 50, 60 year old drug, significantly reduces mycobacterium. That's exciting. What's this amphotericin B? Flow cytometry analysis confirmed a significant reduction in the percentage of A549 lung epithelial cells and that ingested these mycobacterium, okay? I'm not denying the presence of mycobacteria, but when bacterium are significantly reduced by an antifungal drug called amphotericin B, we need to either rethink the name, mycobacterium, or the cause of mycobacterium infections. I changed my diet. I took Nystatin, this is 50, one years ago. I realized through all of this that this book was correct. And so many medical books are looking for new drugs, new drugs, new drugs. Talk to your doctor if you have any mycobacterium disease about amphotericin B, an antifungal drug. Hope that helps. I hear that they, how much they love the Pioneer and what it does for them. It's, you know, silent, no moving parts. So they're calling to get another. So they're calling because they have to have, uh, that's the only maintenance is to re we recommend replacing the lamp once a year. Ooh, that was a great shot. The Pioneer right in the middle and then it panned down and on to me. This Pioneer, every one of us watching this right now needs a Pioneer. I have a couple of them here at the studio. I have a couple of them at home. Why? Chris Chase, Lisa Chase. Good to see you again, Lisa. Good to Thank see you, you too. for coming. Um, why am I so enamored? And Chris, this is from a guy who, when I met my wife almost 50 years ago, had one of those coffee table air purification systems because our friends would come over, sit in our living room and smoke, and it would <laughs> suck this way. Do you guys remember? Are you as old as I am? This is amazing. Good things come in small packages. You got into this many years ago. Teach us. Well, I, you know, <clears throat> my background is in marketing, not not product development. And and uh, I knew a couple of guys, and my partner knew a, those same guys, and they were they were people that had an engineering background and they, they invented in fact the the first um, refrigerator ice maker Bobby and Tim wow. developed that and uh, but anyway they they Tim in particular was you know a big Florida fan and, and um, <clears throat> Florida had a uh, what they call a sunshine lab in Gainesville and they did a lot of work on contract work for NASA. And one of the contract jobs that they had was they wanted to, uh, that NASA wanted them to build an air treatment system that they could use in the, back then the space capsules and later on the shuttles 
to, to try to control some of the odors, least I be gross, that humans have being sure. together for three or four days in a little capsule. Can you imagine the smells that were coming out of that? Yeah. And, and uh, it, they needed something compact. They needed something that would treat odors, but they also needed something that wouldn't interfere with communications, that didn't draw a lot of po power, you, you know, to operate, uh, did take up a lot of space, you know, in the capsule, you know, and out of that came the technology we call photocatalysis. Uh, which is a big word that basically means, you know, light-driven technology, and that's what this product does. And Lisa, do people, when they call in, that's a nutshell. I mean, that's really, really <laughs> good. What are some of the questions? Because uh, you had a problem getting the lamps during this whole uh, COVID uh, past few years because NASA wanted more, the military wanted them, hospitals, every medical clinic had to use this technology. Why was that? to keep germs out of the operating room, out of the medical setting. Well, the truth be told on that, Doug, is is a medical industry knew way before COVID ever came, came down the pike that CUV light was effective at killing virus. After, after COVID came out, they, there were studies done where they actually proved that UVC light killed the COVID virus and all of the known mutations to date. We hear there's another strain in Africa right now that's likely to, mm -hmm. to uh, cross the ocean and hit us this, this winter. And so you're going to have, a, a, you know, another round of people wearing masks and, you know, and, and this sort mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm. That little gadget right there produces C, uh, UVC light, and that is, is known to kill virus in general and COVID and its mutations in particular. They can learn that on TV, but by the time they pick up the phone, UVA, UVB, UVC, doesn't mean anything to me. Before we go to this break, jump off. Give me one very common question when I say, hello, this is Pioneer, Lisa speaking. <laughs> what do you hear? I hear that they, how much they love the Pioneer and what it does for them. It's, you know, silent, no moving parts. So they're calling to get another. So they're calling ah. because they have to have, uh, that's the only maintenance is to re we recommend replacing the lamp once a year. How do you do that, folks? We get back. Now you know the basis of this, NASA. You know the science of this, medical school is saying, this stuff erases viruses, oh, by the by, and fungi, mycotoxins. Don't go away. Chris and Lisa and I will be right back with more. So we just sent a check off to you guys. We bought a couple of lamp modules. And I know the audience wants to know, okay, God, this I plug in, it makes this beautiful blue light. It's great aroma, no noise, you know, no moving parts. But the lamp module is important. John, if you can run that, uh, that demonstration here so Chris and Lisa can see it, they can explain it. Well, that's just showing how the lamp module fits down into the base unit base unit is either standard or smart point and then the lamp module uh, you have three coverage areas uh, either the 350 the 350 square feet the 750 square feet or the 1500 square feet all of that's built into the lamp module you know what Lisa you always you you bring this up so often I think it's so great because we used to do this I don't travel anymore I drive you know to <laughs> Austin and then back to Dallas <clears throat> But I used to put this in my carry-on. It was so easy. What's in a motel room? <laughs> you know, when you got the kids and everything, and most motel rooms now have dogs and cats or friendly and so forth. But it's so simple to take with you. What are some of the other benefits of using this over these larger units? Well, first of all, like you just said, it's super lightweight. It's just a couple of pounds. Um, you could put it in your suitcase, your carry-on. 
Um, and as you mentioned, I mean, these hotel rooms. <laughs> who knows, right? Who knows? Um, but they're, they're not always the, the ple most pleasant. And if it is a nice smell, it's something that's probably chemicals. not good for us. Yeah, yeah the chemicals. So um, just an added benefit that it's light enough where some of these other products out there are just so cumbersome and heavy and, you know, mm -hmm. just. Would, you wouldn't take them with you, so. You know what, you guys, we talk about this, one of the benefits of it remediating these viruses, all viruses that we know of. That doesn't mean that it cures COVID, obviously. That means if you're home, someone's in there coughing and hacking, and they're releasing all these viri, uh, viri are dead until they find a host to jump onto. This can zap them. These negative ions can grab those positive ions. So don't be confused when you see on TV or on the news when it says, you know, it doesn't cure COVID. You can clean your home of all sorts of viruses like the flu. What are some of the common things we're exposed to, Chris, inside our home? Well, if you think about the how your home smells, any kind of odors in your home are potential pollutants. Okay. Okay. If you think about your pets, all pets have some amount of pet dander, some more than others, depending on how much they shed and, and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Then you think about pet mistakes and litter boxes and that sort of thing. All of those are sources of pollution. What people don't think a lot about is it's like their flooring, their carpets, mm -hmm. their drapes and that sort of thing. The things that they, the manufacturers use to make those products or different forms of formaldehyde. Now, if you're ready to die and you want to be in mom, you know, then have at it. But if you, you know, if that's not really what you want, then you might want to do something about, you know, neutralizing some of those, some of those odors. In the spring, especially, you got flowers blooming and, and they're beautiful. But along with that comes pollen. Mm -hmm and the pets and the kids and you, you track that into the house and then it gets trapped in the house and you, you know you've either got to clean it up or inhale it or deal with it and, and but other units can help remediate one of those or two of those maybe not odors but this this is the reason dollar for dollar i can't get over it i've seen twenty five hundred dollar units on the market today this is does all three of those remediates the uh, the chemicals the the uh, particulate cat dander and so forth and the odors I mean uh, Lisa what's a unit cost so for a fraction of what most um, starting around 550 okay. and um, based on the size of the lamp um, up to roughly 800 it's so reasonable you guys I get to look at these all the time they're not photocatalysis. They take a, a, a filter out and put it in the dishwasher, then it's wet. And put it back in, now you're, you know. The whole thing, I, I have always loved, 20 some years ago when we met, I've loved this unit, and it's the only one I have. I have several of them at home, several of them here. Chris, Lisa, you guys think Pioneer, pioneer.net. Bless you, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Friends, sometimes drugs are necessary. I'm a soon-to-be 74-year-old man who took an antibiotic in 2017, and before that, maybe 30, 40 years, maybe took another antibiotic. I'm uh, drug-free because I try and live a lifestyle that stops feeding germs. We know what germs eat, fungal germs especially. The case has come to my attention many times. Antibiotics, they can be life-saving. But there's a darker side to antibiotics, and we discuss that all the time. They are fungal metabolites called mycotoxins. Here we have antidepressants. You ever watch on TV? It's no longer take this antidepressant. It's while you're taking that one, take this one, and this one, and this one. It's simply amazing to me. Today we're going to talk about, in the next five minutes, something called major depressive disorder. What causes depression? How is it treated? According to the Cleveland Clinic, researchers don't know the exact cause of depression. They think that several factors contribute. You know, I read these things and I just, <clears throat> we don't know what causes anything. There's no money. 
in knowing the cause, huge money in trying this antidepressant, then this one, then this one, then this one. You know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Sometimes, folks, I think that can be life-saving. There's got to be people on six antidepressants who aren't suicidal anymore, and that's a good thing. But what about for the majority of us, okay? What causes depression? How is it treated? Antidepressant use has skyrocketed since 99, leading it to become one of the most popular types of pharmaceutical drugs in the U.S. And I can't believe this stat. One in six, 53 million of us are on antidepressants, including uh, more than a quarter of those long-term users defined as a decade or more as of 2016. It's unbelievable how many drugs we Americans take. Controlling depression by controlling gut terrain. This was big. MedPage Today wrote this. Mental health professionals are growing more and more aware of the importance of the role that the gut microbiome, the good terrain that God put there, the bacteria and yeast, and the gut-brain axis plays in mental health. Our findings reinforced by this demonstrating that agents whose primary target of action is the gut microbiome, like probiotic supplements, they are getting it. I'm so excited. Can improve mental health outcomes in people with mental health needs. The road is never ending when you're a drug developer, just finding new people to take the drugs. I love it when they start saying, you mean something for 20 bucks can help depression and it treats it here? Mm -hmm. When this works, everything else works. Major depressive disorders. How effective are prescriptive antidepressant drugs for MDD? And get this stat. About 60% of patients with major depressive disorders do not fully respond to first-line treatment. And about one-third continue to have symptoms even with further treatment. Are they saying the drug treatment for depression is 7% effective? 60 plus a third uh, that don't even do well with new drugs, 93%. That leaves 7% of we Americans are actually doing well on antidepressant drugs, folks. So many people with depression are lost out there. You can't know how many people I worked with clinically in so many clinics that I worked in. They changed their diet, they got on psyllium, they got on probiotics, and all sorts of things began clearing up. What were their findings? At eight weeks, patients in the probiotic group achieved numerically greater improvement in depression and anxiety than those who were placed on a placebo. The authors noted that they were unable to determine whether the observed effects were specific to the interaction with the SSRIs. I'll keep going. The doctor readers are now wondering, hmm, did those antidepressants finally kick in? Coincidentally, upon starting the probiotics, this is unfortunately the way many doctors think. Another study done on MDD patients and probiotics seven years before this study seemed to question whether or not the antidepressant drugs finally started working. As a trained physician who believes in prescription writing, that's how you get people better, it would blow my mind to see something I could walk into Walgreens and buy for 20 bucks could help with depression. Both of these studies were smaller. Both were done exclusively on MDD, a major depressive disorder. Both were eight weeks in length, and both achieved the same conclusions, that probiotics were beneficial. But the 2016 study, presumably, it wasn't mentioned in the study, didn't have the patients on the antidepressant medicines while they were taking the eight weeks of probiotics. Their conclusion, probiotic administration in patients with MDD for eight weeks had beneficial effect on Beck assessments and insulin uh, resistance and so forth. This is big. If I had depression, I'd ask my doctor, look, can we tighter down off my medication and start taking something simple like probiotics for a month, change my diet to avoid grains and sugars, and see if I don't feel much, much better. I hope that helps. Thank you, Chris and Lisa. I love both of them together, all the way from Atlanta, talking about this. If you've got a child, a pet, a husband, a wife, a grandma living with you who has allergies, the Smart Point Photocatalysis Unit, the Pioneer, is the one you want. Here's the phone number, all the information, and so forth. Pioneer.net. Uh, depression. How many pills? Why is everyone depressed? Can't figure that one out, right? Past few years have been strange. Finally, biblical leprosy. Is it a myco, a fungus, or is it a bacterium? God bless you folks. Thanks for joining us every day, 24 years and running. God bless, bye-bye.
preceding program, Know the Cause, was paid for by Mediatrician Incorporated.